What's good, Wizards fans? It's your hosts, the real Ed Oliver and Brandon and Scott. Today, we're going to talk about the Miami Heat possibly having interest in Tyus Jones and also some roster moves with Ryan Rollins and Habadu Giallo. Let's get to it. You are Locked On Wizards, your daily Washington Wizards podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I just want to thank you guys for making Lockdown Wizards your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any win- winning $5 money line bet. That's $150. If your team wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. All right, so... We're going to talk about Tyus Jones first. It's, it's an action-packed show. We saw a lot of people upset about the Ryan Rollins news. If you didn't know, he was waived by the Washington Wizards, and they uh, they promoted Hamadou Giallo from the G League team to the Washington Wizards uh, regular team. <coughs> Excuse me. But we're going to start off with the Tyus Jones conversation here. And, and this started from a Rachel Nichols podcast. Who we know Rachel Nichols is now part of Miami Middle Sports. She, she, interviewed, yeah. she does the shows and – did a show with Kyle Kuzma and drunk wine with him and uh, kind of <laughs> wined and dined with Kyle Kuzma and whatnot. I've I seen the commercials. I haven't watched the interviews at all. But um, besides that, so in, in the podcast, she was interviewing DeMarcus Cousins. They were talking about the Miami Heat and them needing a point guard. And she said to DeMarcus Cousins, watch for Tyus Jones, too. He's an interesting name around the Heat. So this is not the first time that, you know, we've seen – them uh, a scene or a media member or somebody in the media bring up Tyus Jones and there's another article about it yeah talking about Tyus Jones possibly being a name uh for the Miami Heat for sure and just talking about that fit so what are your thoughts on that and then what what could what do you what do you see as potentially getting back from the Miami Heat for Tyus oh oh um I think it's definitely a fit you know if you um look at his body of work very disciplined player um works hard he would i think he would definitely fit in with the heat culture um high character player but you know what i would want in return easy nikola jovich easy 610 you know he can shoot from the perimeter he can defend 240 pounds so he can definitely get in the paint i mean we need we need more paint guys man um i mean if you look at his age he's young he fits the timeline yeah, that, that's what I'm rolling with, man. I would definitely roll with Nikola Jovic. I think you'd definitely be a young prospect. Um, look at the Tyus, man. I think I'm you're not gonna get too much from him. And if you look at Miami their picks, they don't have many picks to go. I don't see us getting the first. They have, I mean, I know they have their 2024 because we were talking about before, you know, they don't have their 2025, but I don't think we're gonna get a first for Tyus, anyways. Um, maybe a second, we'll see, but their their pick situation is very scarce at this point. And even if we got a, a pick, it'll be a late pick because they're a team that eh, trying to compete, trying to take the next step. Maybe Tyus would be definitely a good move for them going forward at the backup Kyle Lowry. But I think it'd be a good move for Tyus. You know, backing up Kyle Lowry, he um Kyle Lowry in, in the event of injury, you know, he could come in and start. You know, he definitely run that second unit for Miami. And so I think it's a good move for Miami for us. See the chance to get a young player. So I think there'll be a really good good trade. I mean no matter where you go, um Tyus is value, you're not gonna get a first in my opinion. I mean I, you know I kind of said before that if you read the market right, if you find a situation where, you know, maybe they need a guy who could be that floor general just to be a guy who can distribute on a team that's trying to challenge for the playoffs, yeah, you maybe you can get a first, man. But, no, nah, I, I think along the lines of what kind of package we can get back for most teams, maybe a second-round pick, maybe a young guy. And looking at Miami, Nikola Jovic would be the guy that I'm definitely looking at. Um, there's a few other guys, I mean, um, looking at their roster, man. Um, Hayward Highsmith, maybe. He's a young, intriguing player. But outside of that, they're not. I don't see anybody that's gonna move. I mean, Tyler Hero. I, I don't know if I want Tyler Hero here as a rebuild. I, it, it feels like just another Jordan Poole situation where a guy who comes from a contender, you know, going to a rebuilding team, and you'll see how he acclimates. But I, I don't really want to see Tyler Hero. Nothing against Tyler Hero. He's definitely a really good player, but I think he fits better on a team that's trying to challenge for playoffs if they move him at all. Um, no, to Thomas Bryant, been there, done that. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see, Kevin Love. I'm good. Josh Richardson was, I mean, the, the, the real play I'm looking at is Nikola Jovich, man. So, you know, that's the type of return I like to see coming back to D.C., in my opinion. 
Right, hundred percent. I do like the return of Nikola Jovic. Um, just looking at their picks for the future, the Miami Heat they have uh, one. <coughs> excuse me, first round pick in twenty twenty four. They don't have any in twenty twenty five. Uh, they do have a first round pick in twenty twenty six. So of course they're they're going to make the playoffs. So their their first round pick is going to be a low pick, probably like in the twenties or something like that. Um, like you said, I don't think we'll get a first for Tyus. I think we get something like a second. The only second that they have really in the future is a 2026 second round pick. They don't really have a lot of – that's the only second round pick they have until 2030. Just looking at what Miami Heat, the picks that they have available, 2027 they have a first, 28 they have a first, 2029, 20, 2030 20, they have a first. So, yeah, they, they've traded a bunch of second round picks. Uh, they traded a second to Atlanta or New York, depending on the protections. They traded 2025 second to Indiana or Brooklyn, depending on the prote- protections again. So there's a bunch of protections on their picks. But, uh, yeah, they don't have a lot of second-round picks to give up. So, But knowing the Wizards, of course, we're going to get that 2026 second-round pick. That one has no protections at all. Um, I could see, like like you said, Nikola Jovic, uh, maybe another player, and then a second-round pick. I think something like that would be fair value for Tyus Jones. Looking at their roster, like you said, hey, with Highsmith. <coughs> Excuse me. Um I don't know if they would move on from Duncan Robinson. I know they tried to trade him in the past, but he's been playing kind of – he's been playing a lot better for them. He played pretty well in the finals last year. And then Tyler Hero, I don't see them trading him at all because he's playing really, really well. Yeah. When Jimmy's been hurt, he stepped up big time for them. Him and Jaime Hawkes, they played really, really good for, for the um, for the Heat while he's been out. Caleb Martin is a starter. So, yeah. looking at the Heat's roster, they don't really – they find ways to always make the playoffs. But looking at their roster, their their roster is not like a sexy roster. They always have guys that, you know, are undrafted and two way contract guys. Like, uh, like last year they had Gabe Vincent and yeah, you yeah. know, Duncan Robinson's undrafted guy. They always have guys that you know have worked their ways up. And, and uh, Thomas Bryant is a third string center on the roster. So they they don't really have a lot of like young young and upcoming talent on the, on the roster. So they're not the best team to really trade with to give value back, but. I, I can see that happen. Like you said, I think Tyus is a good culture fit yeah. with the Miami Heat. They traded away Gabe Vincent. I do think they are missing having that backup point guard with Kyle Lowry being in and out of the lineup. So Tyus would certainly help them. And he's a veteran. He's been in the playoffs many, many, many times. I could see him starting for them too. I don't think it would be hard for him to start over uh, Kyle Lowry or compete for that starting job. Or even if he doesn't get it, he'll definitely get like 25 minutes a night for sure. And, uh, yeah, I, I think he would play really good with uh, Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo. I could see him helping that team a lot, making the playoffs. So, um, yeah, I, I could see it happening. So, Rachel Nichols, she she thinks it could happen. And uh, the trade deadline is February 8th. So, I just think if, if you can get – if you could, you know, kind of finesse a late first, that would be awesome. But if you can get a couple of good young players and a second-round pick, I think that's a win uh, for trading tight shows. Yeah, same here, man. Um, I like to see Tyus go to a contender because I mean he's been a, a really good character guy here in DC. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we know that you know coming in, he was definitely gonna be moved, but he's definitely been kind of under the radar, our leadership guy here in DC, man. So uh, you know, I like you know high character guys. So again, you know, I definitely like to see him go to a contender. Miami, you know, I, I you know, like I said, Nikola Jovic, man, his size. I think that he, you know, he's not getting a lot of minutes right now. Um, he's got potential to, you know, spread the floor. You know, I think there's a lot of potential with him, man. I would love to see him come to D.C. I think that this is the type of move that really is good for this team as far as a rebuilding team. You need young talent. You need young talent that you can evaluate. And especially after the deadline, you you better believe you're going to get spinners. So, mm. you know, um, I think that would be the best case, uh, best case scenario move. And like you said, you know, Kyle Lowry has been kind of up and down. Tyus could come in and start. And he doesn't have to do too much but distribute and be that ball, uh, that um, floor general because – most of the guys in the starting five, man, you know, even with uh, Jimmy in, can create shots for himself. So it's just putting people in the best position, you know, so and he can do that. He's shown that in D.C. So he doesn't have to do too much. You know, Jimmy Buckets, um, Tyler Hero, you know, Bam out of bio, you know, he, he could definitely fit in. So, yeah, I, li- I like the matchup. I, I, I like the potential for a trade with the Miami Heat. Mm, you're looking at Jovic. He was a former first-round pick, 27 pick of the draft. He was in the G League a little bit this year. Uh, kind of bouncing back and forth between the G League mm. and the regular team. Uh, he's had, he has had a couple of good games since he's come up to the regular team. The main team hit 11 points against the Warriors, 15 against the Lakers, 15 points, eight boards. Uh, that's a pretty good showing. Then 11 points and three boards against the Warriors, uh, six points, eight rebounds, and six assists yeah. against the Rockets. So he's a versatile big, man. He's he's not, of course, he's a modern-day big, 6'11", 6'10". <coughs> Excuse me. 
Um, you know, still growing into his body, still getting stronger. Only 205 pounds, but yeah, get him in a weight room, get him in the right program and the right system. Of course, of course, the heat is one of the best developmental systems. But coming over here, you see what you can get from him. He's a big that will shoot the three. He can pass, put the ball on the floor. He can play above the rim, block shots. He had two blocks against the Rockets too. So uh, he's a young guy with a lot of potential. He's he's still only 20 years old. Oh yeah, I mean, like I said. He fits the timeline, so I, you know, I definitely, mm. you know, he fits right in, man. So yeah, you know, I think that to me, that's the best case scenario, man. I would definitely like to see, um, Jovic, man. He would definitely be the guy that I'm aiming for as a return. So, um, man, we're gonna go ahead and roll into um Diallo signed to a mm. ten year contract, and Ryan Rollins was waived. So we'll talk about whether you agree with that or not. But before we do, nice episode is brought to you by. FanDuel. So the NFL regular season is wrapping up, but it's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $150 and bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use. I'm trying to tell you. There's so many, there's so many things you can bet on, like live, same game parlays, find bets in the new Explore tab, right? Make a parlay in the Parlay Hub. It's the best way to find popular parlays and a lot more so all you have to do is visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup fanduel the official partner of the national football league and locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on youtube on those sports today is here for you 24 7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of locked on plus our national shows covering every league go to locked on sports today on youtube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel so like you said e um very busy today for the wizards um diallo was signed to a 10-day contract but it came to the, ex at the expense of ryan rollins being waived so mm -hmm. i know there's been kind of mixed reactions to this e um diallo can't play formerly of the detroit pistons he, he's athletic he definitely played but ryan rollins you know in a rebuild 21 years old showed a lot of promise at point guard so um what are your reactions, man, to Ryan Rollins being waived and Diallo getting that 10 day contract? Um, I, I wasn't happy with Ryan Rollins being waived. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, who cares? He's at the bottom of the bench, or you know, he's only in the G Leagues to a player. Same thing happened with Jordan Goodwin. I was upset. I was like, Man, why are we trading him? He's a good player. He's actually developed really well. Uh, two way player that played really well, gave him good minutes. And people were telling me, you know, who cares? You know, he barely played, yada, yada, stuff like that. I'm like, it's about development, guys. Look at the Miami Heat. Look at what they did with Duncan Robinson. Look what they did with Gabe Vincent. Look what the player, Max Struess. Look at the, the guys that they had on two-way contracts and undrafted guys that they've de developed and gotten better um, throughout these years, man. So I, I, I just, you know, I, I disagree when people just dismiss uh, so many players that, you know, have developed on two-way contracts. You look at the list. Duncan Robinson was on a two-way. Lou Dort, look at what he's developed yeah, into. Man. So you can't yeah. sleep on two-way players. Chris Boucher for the Raptors. You know, there's, there's so many. Alice Caruso, look at the look at the career he's had and, 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 and made his career into as a, as a solid defender. You know, you just can't sleep on these guys that are two-way two -way players. You know, some of them some of them do turn into really good um, players in, in, in the league, you know. So <coughs> Max Struess. Is a guy that was a, a two-way yeah. player. Uh, Gabe Vincent, I already talked about him. Um, there, there's just there's just some good players that have really really turned their careers. H Jose Alvarado, Gary Payton the second, he was on a two-way. So, I, I you know people just sleeping on these two-way contracts, being like you know you can just throw them away and stuff like that. I want to say Christian Wood was on a two-way contract yeah, too. Yeah. Look how good he's turned out to be. You know, coming from a two-way contract. And I always thought you know Pat Baldwin had 30 points in the G League. And, you know, I honestly, looking at both of them, I, I like both. I like that we picked yeah. up both of these guys. But I thought Ryan Rollins, between the two, I, I think, honestly, he was the better player. You can argue that Ryan Rollins was the best player in the Summer League. Yes, I guess the yeah. Summer League, you know, you kind of yeah. like, oh, who cares if it's the Summer League? But Ryan Rollins, he can defend. He's athletic. He can play above the rim. He can pass. He can get steals, deflections. You know, he's not much of a three-point shooter, but he can slash and get to the basket. I think something was there with him. Yeah, I think he's a guy that you kind of wanted to see what you could get in a couple years. I like Jared Butler too. So it's kind of a numbers game there. They brought him in late. But I, I like Ryan Rollins, man. I thought I thought you could get something out of him for sure. And I, I think he's a diamond in the rough. I really think he can go somewhere and blossom 
on a team. Like I said, I, I think, you know, if he went to the Miami, he he could ascend into like uh, kind of like a Gabe Vincent or a Max Struess, how those guys got better and, and improved in the right system and the right program. So I'm not going to say I'm all, you know, up in arms about it, yeah. but I like the young man. I think he's talented. Same thing with Jordan Goodwin. Jordan Goodwin, if he gets the opportunity, I think he can be a solid player in the NBA. And, uh, <laughs> excuse me. So, yeah, I, I was disappointed to see it. I, I get the fans' frustration, and I, I get people who are just kind of dismissing it and just shooing it away as like, oh, who cares? He's the 15th, 16th man on the roster or whatever. I get both sides of argument. But if it were up to me, I, I would have tried to see maybe they can get him back later on. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, like, once again, it's a numbers game. They wanted to get Giallo on the roster. And I'm a big fan of Giallo. Like, I'm excited to see Giallo because yeah. – he brings athleticism. He brings physicality. We are a finesse team, and he's probably the he's probably gonna be the the most physic. He's gonna he's probably gonna be on a team that he's probably gonna be the guy that plays with the most physicality on the roster. Yeah, yeah. day one. You know, as far as bumping guys, putting his shoulder in his chest, in people's chest, dunking on people. But you're gonna see that from. So I hope he really gets playing time. I hope they actually play him and not just bring him up, um, just to have him on a bench. I hope he actually plays, man, because he, he he can rebound too. He he's probably the best rebounder on the team. It's really just between him and Gafford, but he he's really going to be the you, people going to see like he he he's a good he's a good player. He should have never been in the G League, in my opinion. And um, I found a, a stat on Giallo as well. You know, he he last year he was a top ten rim finisher. He was uh he had seventy two point one percent a seventy two point one percent field goal percentage. And uh, 201 field goals attempted with the with the uh, Detroit Pistons last season, so he he was a top 10 rim finisher among guards in the league. Other guys on the list were De'Aaron Fox, Steph Curry, uh, Terrence Mann, Luka Doncic, Quentin Grimes, Bruce Brown, Josh Hart, Bradley Bills on that list last year too, and De- Demar Derozan. So he's in good company. Like this guy, he's gonna put some people on some posters. So I'm excited to see Giallo. But like I said, I'm a, I'm a disappointed, but I'm not gonna you know, cry over spilled milk on Ryan Rollins. It's nothing to lose sleep over. But like I said, I, w- I wish Ryan Rollins the best. Yeah, same here, man. I agree on all points. Um, Looking at Rollins, um, not going to be too upset about it, but I felt like he fit the timeline. He showed promise. And I was very interested to see if he got decent playing time and maybe back up point guard after the deadline. I thought that maybe could have been a goal for him. So I am surprised. I'm not going <laughs> to. Really, you know, I mean, I'm not going to be too upset about it, but I think it's a little questionable. Um, you're right on with the Allo man. I mean, he is a Skywalker. He can he can finish strong. I mean, he can rebound. He's a dog, man. I like what he can do. Um, so he should get a really good look after the deadline, man, and get some minutes because, as we all know, after the deadline, this is going to be a, officially a youth movement, and it's all about giving a lot of these young guys quality minutes and see what they can do and see. You know, what can we can what can they fix? You know, what is the future in organization? So it's definitely evaluation time after the deadline, man. But you know, Diallo is a is he good talent. You know, he showed glimpses in Detroit, obviously, with all of the talent they have in Detroit, especially at the position he plays, man. Log jam. But if you look at his his body of work for the uh Capital City Gogo this year, he was putting up some serious numbers in the Gogo, man. I mean, he was lighting the G League up, and I'm with you, he shouldn't have been there. I thought he definitely should have been a guy who should have been on the NBA roster. And so he lightened up the G League. So, you know, it, it's sweet and salty, man. Like, you know, I, I liked Rollins. I, th- I thought he showed promise. I thought he had potential. But, you know, Diallo, he's not a scrub either, man. So, you know, like I said, we'll see. I know that a lot of people on the Wiz Twitter, man, you know, a lot of people up in arms and some people don't care. Is you know, opinions are like butts, man. Everybody got one. So, <laughs> so you know, it is what it is. But. Uh, we'll see because uh, you know, a lot of these moves at the deadline are gonna be key. Because, like I said, after the deadline, man, the youth movement officially starts, man. So, I'm with you on that. E, so, um, I guess we'll we'll, we'll roll right into the oh, yeah, hold in- on. I found another, yeah. I'm sorry, another player who was on a two way contract is Nas Reed. He yeah, has had okay. a uh solid career so far with the uh Timberwolves. Yeah, I'm looking it up now, and I want to say Austin Reeves was on a oh. two-way contract, and he's playing really, really well. Yeah, Austin Reeves initially signed a two-way contract with the Lakers that led to a standard minimum contract in 2021 NBA training camp. So, like I said, guys, like, everybody's trying to, you know, dismiss the two-way guys. But yeah. if you really get them in your program, 
and develop them and let them play and see what they can do. Like guys can show up like Austin Reeves just signed a four year, $56 million contract. And he was on a two way contract to start off, you know? So yeah. I, 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 you know, like, like I said, with Jordan Goodwin and guys like that, I, I I'm a big advocate of the two, two way guys. Like I'm a big fan of those guys. I root for those guys, the whole Jose all Alvarado's of the world guys who got it out the mud. And I think Ryan Rollins, could, you know, Caleb Martin, oh, he signed a two-way contract with the Miami Heat. So I'm just naming so many guys that, you know, were on two-way deals that turn out to be something. So, you know, we can see, like like I said, Gary Payton the second too, he was on the two-way. He was here in D.C. Yeah. You know, we can see something like that happen again yeah. where Gary Payton the second left and went off and played well somebody with the Warriors and won a championship. We can see. <laughs> Ryan Rollins potentially maybe the same thing that happened with him. So, but like I said, I'm not going to cry over spilled milk or anything like that. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> you know, we have a lot of things going on here with that. We have to worry about with the trade deadline, but Giallo, I think he's going to do a good job here. Uh, we had Chris Dunn here last year in the G league program oh, yeah. and he went to the jazz and he's on the full roster. He's playing really, really well. So I can see something like that happen with Giallo as well. Yeah, man, I agree with you. Do not sleep on a 10-day contract, man, because uh -huh. look, people lead people lead to be really productive players in the NBA. So um, we're gonna roll into tomorrow night's name a game against the Indiana Pacers and do that preview. But before we do, tonight's episode is brought to you by Better Help. And with 2024 finally here, um, depending on what your resolution is, but if, whether it's physical, whether it's mental or spiritual, but we all want to make a change in 2024. So I definitely recommend talk to somebody, figure some things out, find who you are in 2024. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. So look, all you got to do is celebrate the progress you've already made by visiting betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA today to get 10% off your first month. Again, that is better help. H E L P dot com slash locked on M B A. So, E, uh, we have the Indiana Pacers, or we, uh, we got them on the road. I was say, oh, uh, we on the road against Indiana. Uh, looking at the Indiana Pacers real quick, they are 21 and 15, sixth in the East. So, they are definitely in kind of on the border between the um, play in and can, uh, playoff team. And the Washington Wizards, it pains me to say this, are 6 and 30, 14th in the East. So, but one thing to look at Tyrese Halliburton, uh, slipping on the court, got injured. Um, I know the timetable it varies, but he is going to definitely be out for a little bit long enough to where they're saying it might impact uh, a potential NBA award or two he might get. So, uh, looking at this Indiana Pacers game, I'm not gonna say keys victory, obviously, keys the development and um prediction but do you think this is definitely a game where the wizards can definitely try to sneak and win in because tyrus halliburton with him not being on that roster it does hurt so what do you think right um i it, i'll say <laughs> it's a winnable game yeah i don't think they will win but i think it's a winnable game i gotta look at how they play recently with with him not being there and uh how that's really affected them but um, the Pacers are a terrible defensive team. The Wizards are a terrible defensive team as well. So it's going to be a shootout. Uh, it looks like they just beat the – they actually beat the Celtics. Yeah. Uh, 133 to 131 without without um, Tyrese Halliburton. That's the game where Halliburton – actually, no, Tyrese Halliburton – yeah, this is the game where Halliburton got injured. Yeah. But uh, Jason Tatum did not play for the Celtics that game, which – the, the Celtics are still a good team, even without Jason Tatum. They still, you know, have Porzingis, Al Horford, Drew Holiday, Derek White, Jalen Brown, um, Peyton Pritchard off the bench. It's been really good this year. So um, that's that's a good win for the Pacers still without Tyrese Halliburton. Halliburton only played 13 minutes. But other guys have stepped up, like Benedict Matherin. He ended up with 26 points. So that's a guy we certainly have to watch out for. He's cooked us a lot in the past. And uh, Miles Turner has had really good games against the Wizards before, for sure. Uh, everybody, Jalen Smith from the from Maryland, he had a double-double <laughs> last time. Uh, Obi Toppin. So it doesn't really matter who you are, honestly, on the Pacers. They've had uh, a lot of – Buddy Hill, who's a name, whose name is in trade rumors a lot. Oh, yeah. Um, we could – we could. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw, like, a Kuzma for Buddy Hill and uh, a pick or something like that in the next oh. couple of weeks. 
Uh, I've seen like rumors like that go around. But um, yeah, I, I think it's a winnable game, but I, I don't see the Wizards winning. Yeah, I mean, like you said, I don't think this is one of those situations where it's like if you cut off the head of the snake, then the body's going to wither. I think they mm-hmm. have a lot of talent on this team, man. Now, obviously, Tyrus Halliburton, man, he is definitely the floor general, the leader of this team. But, I, you know, TJ McConnell, he's a guy who has proven in the past he can definitely come in and start a point guard and be that guy to distribute. And, you know, this team is not bad. <laughs> I mean, this team is scary without Tyrus Halliburton. I mean, you're looking at Bruce Brown, Jalen Smith, and Miles Turner. They both have known to, to be Wizards killers, man. But, you know, their bench, Buddy Hill, Benedict Matherin, Obi Toppin, Isaiah Jackson. I mean, they still have a lot of talent. I mean, Jarris Walker. I mean, <laughs> If you really want to go way back on the bench, James Johnson, Jordan, I mean, you see what I'm saying? Like, they have talent, man. So I think this, obviously, is not going to be a defensive game. It's going to be a scoring game. Uh, so I think that it's going to be close, but it's going to be high scoring. But I, I eventually see I, I see the Pacers winning this game. But it's going to be a very close game. Um, mm-hmm. Because the Wizards, you know, if, you, if you look at the OKC game, um, they they had that fight in them. And I, and I expected they were going to come out and play harder because of the comments made by – uh, Kyle Kuzma previously, and he kind of made the same comments last night about all the issues they had with rebounding and defense. So I, I felt like the comments that he made, as far as publicly, kind of light a fire under them. But you know, this team's got to be consistent. And, and you know, if you look at the record, man, it's indicative of how consistent we really are. I mean, <laughs> six and thirty, man. You know, we just we we can't. This team has just we can't consistently find that dog in this team, man. You know, we, we'll have a good game, and then the next game is just like where are we at? We're a totally different team. So I think. With Ty, uh, Tyrese Halliburton, I'm kind of look at a couple people, Tyus Jones and Jordan Poole. I want to see them be a lot more hungry as far as um, attacking, man. Definitely attack. You know, Jordan Poole had a really good game against the Thunder, 24 points. Uh, Tyus has looked really good this year. I want to see them a lot more active with Halliburton being out. Um, looking at their depth chart, um, Aaron Neesmith, I don't know if – I think that's a favorable matchup for Denny at the, at the uh, small forward. I think this is definitely a matchup where he can try to get a lot more aggressive offensively because he's looked pretty good offensively. He, um, Denny yeah. really looked good offensively. Um, looking yeah. at Smith and Miles Turner, I mean, let's be 100. E, you know, Gafford has not been looking very good. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's been looking really, really checked out and bad, man. Um, so Miles Turner always gives us some smoke, man. So that's definitely a matchup I, I want to look at, but I think that you're going to see the same issues, man. Interior defense, you're going to see a lot of points in the paint. Um, they're going to attack the basket. Look, the MO on how to come at us is attack the paint. Attack the pain because we're not very disciplined. We, you know, the fouls, we, we always have a lot of foul trouble. Um, we're not disciplined. They're going to attack the basket. They're going to try to get us in foul trouble, especially Gafford, and try to get Mescal up in there, man. And then because they know that's where you hit us. And perimeter defense, again, as you saw against the Thunder and pretty much every team we played against this year, the defensive rotations are continuing to be slow. And man, they're going to capitalize on, on, on the perimeter. I mean, like I said, look at the shooters they have. I mean, even if their bigs can shoot, Miles Turner and Jalen Smith can't shoot. I mean, Obi Toppin, he's developed a really solid three-point shot. Buddy Hill and Benedict Matherin, man, are going to cook you on the perimeter. So, yeah, I, again, and it's become like a slogan for a lot of people, man. I'm laughing on, on Wiz Twitter, man. Different game, same script. <laughs> so that's kind of where I'm at, man. So um, I think we both predict a L for the Wiz. But, look, I think we're both hoping that they prove us wrong and play hard in Indiana on the road. So looking at it again, E., uh, they played Indiana Pacers on the road. Uh, hold on. I believe it's seven o'clock. Let me get back to the page. Oh, well, mm, tomorrow night yeah. at seven o'clock. Yeah, seven o'clock. Got you. Um, they are Indiana facing the Indiana Pacers, so definitely watch, show your support. Let's we'll try to get this dub, man, in Indiana. So, we're gonna go ahead and roll before we roll anything else, man. Um, just look at any, I'm looking at some of their stats, it's like stuff that kind of is not going to matter tomorrow night yeah. because Tyrese Halliburton is a big part of those numbers. Like the Pacers are number one in assists, but we've seen games where Halliburton had 20 assists. So he's a big part of that. Yeah. You're not going to see anything like that tomorrow. They do block a lot of shots. They're fourth in blocks. Halliburton's a guy that's not blocking the shots. So that is other guys doing that. Like Miles Turner, Jalen Smith. Uh, they're number one in points per game. A lot of that is because of Halliburton as well, just pushing the pace. They're number two in pace. That's because of Halliburton. So I don't know what their pace is going to look like. Are they going to try to push with McConnell? Yeah. I don't know. Let me see if Andrew Nimhard is playing because he's a good guard too. Yeah. So he's a guy that they're going to have to look out for uh, tomorrow night. You already brought up TJ McConnell too. So, you know, he's a guy that's cooked the Wizards in the past. 
uh, for sure. But, um, yeah, just keeps the development. Look at Bilal. Um, you know, I, he needs to get more touches and more shots. Uh, just be more aggressive as well. Denny's been playing well offensively. He's definitely rebounding the ball really well. Kuzma has to rebound. And Jordan Poole, he looked good the other day. But, you know, is he going to finish the game? How much playing time is he going to get in the fourth quarter? How much time is he going to get down the stretch? Because the big complaint about him the other day or last game was that, you know, Wes, or it really was a complaint about Wes, is that Wes didn't get him in there quick enough. Yeah. Now, Shemet did play well. I will give Shemet his credit. So I think some of that had to do with how Shemet was playing. But still, you got to find a way to get your best player who has a hot or one of your better players on the roster who has the hot hand in Jordan Poole. You got to find a way to, to get, him on, get him on the floor. Yep, I completely agree, man. I think that bring up really good points, man. So mm-hmm. we'll see. Um, like I said, whether it's Nimhard or TJ McConnell, I think that they're not going to – I mean, I, I don't want to say it's not going to be a big drop-off. It is with Tyler Halliburton being mm-hmm. out. But I think they're going to be able to come in – and be able to put in quality minutes really because they got a lot of shooters. They got a lot of guys you can create. So, again, tomorrow night, Indiana Pacers, definitely show you sport. Try to get this dub. So, go ahead and roll tonight. Definitely appreciate mm-hmm. you guys. Um, wherever you get your podcast, five star review is much appreciated. And on the YouTube side, like, subscribe, definitely comment below. What do you guys think? So, hail to the Wizards and peace. peace. See you take guys. Over on Matherin, take the overall math tomorrow night on his points. Oh. Definitely rebounds. Definitely <laughs> take over on Miles Turner, man. Yeah. <laughs> Try to take. So you guys have a good night, man. See you guys tomorrow night, man. Peace.